right now on Upfront. Firing back. I'm just going to keep saying it over and over again. They are morons. They are stupid. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss officially challenging and blasting the group attempting to recall him. It's election fraud, plain and simple. Now investigations underway, residents saying their names were forged. I feel extremely violated. Recall organizers calling it sabotage. Now Speaker Voss is here, the revealing interview and his newfound support for Trump. Combating conspiracies. We're here to try to not only educate, but also hear from people as to what those concerns are. Another critical event just hours away, state and local election officials showing up, all attempting to get ahead of the 2024 election. And the organizer of it all, former state Senator Kathy Bernier is here, cashing in on Top Chef. It means that Milwaukee is punching well above its weight. The star-studded premiere in Milwaukee, the Wisconsin season ahead, and how tourism officials are going national. Tourism Secretary Ann Sayers from the red carpet moments away. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. A fiery assembly speaker promising this weekend the group attempting to recall him failed. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss officially filing his challenge with the State Elections Commission. Recall organizers submitted more than 10,000 signatures, upset over Voss's previous criticism of former President Donald Trump and his refusal to impeach the state's elections chief. But even an initial review by Elections Commission staff found the group likely did not have enough valid signatures. A final review is underway. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss joins us. Speaker, welcome back to the show. Good, Good to morning. see you like yeah, always. Thanks for having me on. You put a lot of time and resources into going through these signatures. You yeah. had volunteers. You hired a private investigator. You took this effort pretty seriously. Oh, I would never not take it seriously. I mean, when somebody has almost a million dollars to blow on what I think was a waste of time and resources, you can't take it for granted. Uh, we did the thorough review. We took the 10,700 signatures. We learned that, of course, well below half uh, were legitimate of that number. Only a thousand were actually circulated by people from my district, the vast majority from other states around the country. We now know that Democrats were brought in around March 1st and actually helped at the end to try to gather signatures. So uh, this is not an effort by Republicans, which is what many people have said. It's an effort by a few people on the fringe, a very small number from my own district, being reinforced by grifters out of state uh, who were looks like associated with the Democratic Party. The recall organizers have, have accused you of sabotage and, <laughs> and a list of a number of other things. Matt, Matt Snorks spoke with reporters when he handed in the petition. I want you to take a listen to a few of his sure. comments. He has fought us at every turn. We've had more of our people con confronting uh, conf uh, conflict with law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement officers seeing now binoculars watching us from, you know, shadowy you know, parking lots and whatever. Uh, we've never seen us be uh, people be harassed and bothered so much and we I, I can't tell you why but you know I've lived long enough to realize I don't see that many police officers and members of authority around harassing and hounding us so do I expect that from I expect anything from Robin Voss I think all bets all bets are on the table anything's possible your response well, if you ask anybody who actually lives in Racine County, the only people who were being harassed were the poor citizens of Racine County by these artist state circulators when they went to the gas station, when they went to church, when they went to the grocery store. We now know they forged signatures. Um, you know, Matt Sonora can say what he wants to, but he turned in forged signatures, ones that weren't complete, ones that clearly uh, were all the same handwriting on a page. Uh, so the idea of saying that somehow I organized the stress on myself and the stress on people in Racine County that I wanted to spend upwards of probably fifty to hundred thousand dollars on legal fees to fight against this. It just goes to show that the people who organized it, not some of the people who signed it, I mean I think that they might have had uh, misgivings or they might have had concerns or just done it to get somebody off their front porch, uh, but the people who organized it, bad people who really didn't know what they were doing and really pulled a fast one on the people of Racine County and they should be the ones who are embarrassed. Should people be prosecuted over this? I sure hope so. I mean, that when you sign that form on the bottom, you are declaring that you personally got the signatures and that you know they are residents of the district. The people who circulated those sheets should be prosecuted for fraud that every one of us wants to make sure an election is fair and accurate, but the first process in an election is making sure people get on the ballot legitimately, and this failed in this case. Uh, a lot of this, their concern circles back to the Gableman report. You fired, you hired former Justice Michael Gableman to review the 2020 election. Do you regret that hire now? Of course I do. I mean, I said it six months ago that it was the biggest mistake since I became Speaker. Uh, I thought that someone who had been elected to the state Supreme Court would have had legitimacy to be able to look at people and say, yes, here are some areas where there are problems. 
problems, and there certainly were issues in the 2020 election. Many of those were fixed in the 2022 election, and I think even more are addressed for 2024. Uh, but Mike Gableman is probably the single biggest embarrassment that I have ever had. I, I hope eventually he gets disbarred. He should not be an attorney. Anybody who thinks about hiring him, call me, because I will tell you what uh, awful decision that I made to hire my game. Owner. This is the result of that decision? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I mean, it's sad. It's sour grapes, and that's really where he and a lot of these folks are. Again, I am focused on trying to make sure that in 2024, we have a conservative majority in the state legislature. We reelect our members of Congress that are Republican, and we certainly ensure that we have a different United States Senator and a different president. Uh, that is something that I think all conservatives can unite around and say, this is what we have to focus on for the future. There's a small number of people who are obsessed with the past, and if they don't let it go, it could potentially cost us the presidency and carrying Wisconsin for a U.S. Senate candidate. I'm not gonna let that happen if I have anything to say about it, which is why we are looking to say we the, the recall is behind us. All this craziness of 2020 is behind us. We have to make sure that we get 2024 uh, heading in the right direction and guarantee that our candidates can win. This group says they're not going away. They, they could offer a primary challenger to you in August. Uh, are you for sure running for re-election this Yeah, fall? that's my plan right now. I mean, I, I have no idea why uh, they would continue to say they want to bring somebody forward. I mean, they tried in 22. Then the same people who say you're supposed to be uh, abjectly loyal and never disagree with Donald Trump ran somebody against the Republican nominee. That's me <laughs> in my district. And then they came forward and tried to do this recall with Democrats. So if the goal is to try to ensure that we have Republicans, conservatives controlling Wisconsin, we have to work together and unite, not somehow seem like we're going to go back and relitigate everything. You say that's your plan. Would anything change that? I mean, I, I, you never know. I mean, health could change it or who knows what it would be. But yeah, as of right now, my plan is to make sure we have a good, strong majority in the legislature, and I hope to be a speaker again. Let's talk about Trump. Um, you've endorsed him. How did that come about? Well, it really comes down to we have two choices. Uh, as I've said before to people in my district, I endorsed Ron DeSantis. I think he would have been a better nominee, a two-term potential president, and somebody who has a great track record in Florida. But the decision's already made. Uh, the early primaries, Ron DeSantis didn't succeed, nor did Nikki Haley or anyone else who was running. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. I've never voted for a Democrat for president in my life. I'm not going to start in 2024. He backed your Republican opponent in, in 2022. He, yep. he had this to say about you at a rally. Take a listen. Your rhino, Speaker of the House, Robin Voss. Despite undeniable evidence of rigging and fraud, Speaker Voss has taken no steps to hold the Wisconsin Election Commission accountable, clean up the voter rolls, or right any of the other terrible wrongs that were identified by Justice Gableman. He identified it all. So, Adam, good luck. Good luck. We're with you all the way. I hope you can knock him out. He's been there a long time. He's been there a long time and not done anything. Okay, make this endorsement <laughs> make sense for me. Uh, because, again, this is where the policies that he believes in are more important than anything else, right? I care about the future of Wisconsin. I care about the future of our country. Um, is Donald Trump somebody that I want to have dinner with or would want as my next door neighbor? No, but I think he's the better choice between the two candidates that we have to lead the country. And that's where I, I don't get a, another option. We get two. Will you campaign for him? Yeah, if, uh, if, yeah again, because I want Donald Trump to win Wisconsin. I want him to be the nominee. Well, I want him to be the eventual president because he's already the nominee. Let's talk about the RNC. The convention is going to be here in, mm -hmm. in Milwaukee. This all relates back to Trump. But the RNC itself recently hired Christina Bob, an attorney, to help focus on election integrity. You've gone back and forth with her online a, yeah. a little bit here and there. Uh, she's also pushed false claims about 2020 involving Wisconsin. What do you make of that hire by the RNC? As a bad hire, Christina Bob is part of the fringe element that I don't think helps to build credibility, not only in our party, but in the entire country. Look, America is a center right country. We are not a far right country. We're not a far left country like Joe Biden thinks we're going to be if he has the chance to recraft what America looks like. So again, I don't want to focus on 2020. I don't want to focus on 2022. I want to focus on 2024 and beyond. We have to look forward. I think that we have a good candidate in Wisconsin and our U.S. Senate candidate, Eric Hovde. I think we have great members of Congress who are going to run aggressive campaigns to turn out the vote. And I think Donald Trump is going to help us do that. He is going to help make sure that we have a, a slate of candidates who are talking about issues that focus on the future and bringing in people like Christina Bob who want to obsess on the past. I just don't think that helps that ticket. Have you talked to Trump at all recently? No. No, no, not recently. No. Um, back in 2022, she was critical uh, of the legislation that would have allowed election officials to start processing absentee mm -hmm. ballots a day early. It passed the assembly. It, it failed in the Senate, as we documented here. How, what is that? What is the impact of that going to be now in November here in Wisconsin? 
Again, it's a great bill. Uh, it's one that's done in most states. You look at most other states, they begin processing ballots early so that when you get to the point of the 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock news, uh, you know who the winner is. We could have had that in Wisconsin. Again, a few fringy people, led by Janelle Branchen, tried to throw up some kind of a red herring to say that it would allow ballot harvesting and ballot counting. Look, all the ballots are already in the clerk's office. We would have had observers there between daylight hours to process the ballots. They wouldn't have been fed into the machines even though in other states they are, uh, and they would have been processed quicker on election day. That's what will give more confidence in the process to ensure that there aren't late night ballot dumps because everybody sees what's happening the day before where observers can be there and the day of where observers can follow up. So I wish it would become law. Um, we have to get beyond these fringy people who think that somehow that's what's happening in our election system. There are legitimate concerns about things like Zuckerbucks where we don't want private dollars going into public uh, administration of elections. We don't want undue in Influence, but if other states can show that they can do it in a way that guarantees the integrity of the ballot box, why would we not want the same thing in Wisconsin? Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, Speaker like always, thank you. Thanks, good to see you, man. The Racine County District Attorney's Office is also looking into fraudulent signatures on the recall petition. Don Hagerty is one of those. She discovered her name on the petition, but says she didn't sign it. And take a look, we had her sign her name, her signature, and the one claiming to be hers, completely different and you did not sign the recall? I did not sign the recall, and I declined signing the recall. You were asked to? Yes. And you've taken action, you've called the DA, you've called... I called the DA's office this morning, um, and I also called the Elections Commission to ask if there's a way to get my name redacted off the list because this doesn't represent me. And they told you? They would have to get back to me, that it was a good question, and they would get back to me. Uh, how big of a deal is this to you? It's a very big deal. Why is that? I feel extremely violated. Um, I am a librarian, if I can say that, and uh, the truth matters to me, and I teach students about using primary documents, and my name is now on a primary document. Um, furthermore, I know that the intention of this petition was to go back to what people thought was voter fraud in the state of Wisconsin, and this document represents that very thing. Are you a big Robin Voss backer? Are you a big Robin Voss fan or friend or supporter? I am not. Um, I'm not. Um, so it's it's not like I'm coming to his defense on this, but I think that he should have an apology given to him as well. The Elections Commission now in the midst of that final review. Up next, targeting conspiracy theories, election officials looking to get ahead of 2024. Now a critical meeting Tuesday night. Former State Senator Kathy Bernier leading that effort. She's here next.